Hello again. Long time no see. Been uh, going to continue my Gene Stealer review and discussions on what's been going on. Uh, fortunately, my book has not arrived yet. It is uh, slow going, apparently, for CW, as I understand from my Facebook groups and friends. They haven't received their books yet either. Uh, my store did, but I got the. Uh, I wanted to get the nice uh, collector's edition one, not the limited edition one. That was just a bit too much. But uh, so the collector's one's coming. But I do have uh, the a lot of screenshots from the book itself, so we can talk about the units today. Uh, and kind of what we're looking at. If you have not seen my previous videos, uh, links should be down below. They, I, where I talk about the army rules and uh, some of the discussions like that, the psychic powers. I did not go over stratagems. I'll go over that today. Uh, but stratagems and the units themselves. And just kind of talk a little bit about some army building ideas that I've been having. So... We also know the cult creeds and such, so I'll drop those in if you have not seen those yet. I don't know where you've been. <laughs> but uh, let's start uh, going over it. In the background, I got oops, the other way. Um, just some pictures of my nids. They're the thing I got the most painted. Um, I do have some of my gene cult painted, but I don't have really good pictures of them. So that just to entertain you. I've got some screenshots of the um, better high quality of the G-Sealer book if you want to watch. But... This could be something that you could predominantly listen to if you want. Uh, there will be a point at the end where I use Bowscribe to talk about uh, some points changes, and you will be able to see that, so I'll let you know when that comes up. So without further ado, let's get started. So we've talked about call ambush and things like that, so uh, make sure you have a brief understanding. There was some confusion I saw. Uh, you do measure from the center of your blip, um, so make sure... Not measuring from the outside when you're placing your units and stuff. Very specific. Um, but now to continue. Uh, starting off with the Patriarch. He's our main guy. And it was confirmed. Did eventually find it. You do only get one character per detachment. You could pretty much say that all our characters are unique in terms of detachments. So you're only going to get one Patriarch per detachment. One Magus. One Primus. One Clamavus. Etc. Um, and so... Um, this in mind. Uh, it's quite a limitation. Um, it's never fun when you're limited on choice, but I, I mean, this is a very fluffy decision. There's a lot of fluffy decisions in this book. Um, and I think we're going to be pushed towards having multiple detachments anyway, with different cults, with specialization. So I think limited to one character, if you really wanted to bring more than one character, you're going to be able to do so anyway. Plop them in different detachments and use them there. So Patriarch, uh, being the head of the cult, he uh, has to be your warlord if you have one. Uh, again, kind of limiting on choice. Uh, <clears throat> there is a uh, warlord trait later that, I mean, if you want to take the Patriarch, really limits you. Um, there is a stratagem. That's one command point. We'll talk about it real quick. That if you have a Patriarch, you can make and Primus also have Warlord traits. And it does not say that the Megas and Primus have to be in your same detachment. They could, they're just in your army. So you could have a Patriarch in one detachment as one cult, uh, but then have the Warlord traits of another cult as well through the other characters if they're in that other detachment. So uh, that might be some interesting combos. Um, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, it just does make me sad for like some of the Lower level characters like the Calamorph and stuff, which you really see power boost with a certain warlord trait, but you really have to make sure you don't bring the Patriarch if you do that. But the Patriarch himself is just a killer madhouse powerhouse. Um, very strong, strength six, five toughness, six wounds. His monster running claws are just like in the Tyranid book with minus C, D3. If you roll a six, you're doing minus six D or straight three damage. Um, uh, this guy will tear things apart. And with all our psychic abilities, and with a lot of relics Patriarch can take, uh, this guy can get scary very fast. Um, also keep in mind, he gives himself and GC those around him a plus one to hit in the fight phase. So even if you're a minus one to hit in the fight phase for some reason, he's still hitting on twos. Um, he also has a mini synapse range with a six-inch pass morale for your Colton Brood Brothers. Uh, very, very good. 
um, just with potential of you know screens around him, thanks to the Brood Brothers' unquestionable loyalty ability. Keep in mind also, um, while Patriarch has called ambush, he does not have unquestioning loyalty. Uh, when you read the rule itself, unquestioning loyalty allows that model or that unit to jump in front of the shot to save another character. Um, and this makes sense for him not to have it. He's the head honcho. He's the guy that will never jump in front of a bullet to save anybody. He is the most important thing. Everyone else is going to jump in front of him. So um, that just makes sense. Uh, he can also advance and charge just like a normal brood lord um, from the Gene Stealer one, and he can take familiars. Uh, I think the Crotchling familiar is something that people will take with him, so he gets his plus one to his spell and knows an additional power. Um <clears throat> And I'll talk about a little combo with him later. But Patriarch, uh, excellent powerhouse. Uh, keep in mind, he is coming in at 125 points now, so he's a fair bit cheaper than what he used to be. Um, the guy he used to be insanely expensive. So a good, a good unit overall. Uh, just realize all the requirements of bringing him if you do take him. The Magus. Wonderful spellcaster. Um, he is a uh, pretty much a company commander. Tough three, wound three, or excuse me, wound four. Tough strength three is what I was going for. He has a four staff, which is cool. So he can he can whack some fools if he needs to. Um, he knows one power and can deny one, but he knows two from the broodmind discipline, so it gives him choice as well as smite. And the broodmind discipline is like the best spell lore in the whole game, I think. Um, which is probably necessary with how weak. I, I say weak like it's flimsy. There, there's not a lot of toughness. There's no tough six, seven models aside from the vehicles, which are going to be rare in this army. So having the spells kind of balances it out. Uh, he has Spiritual Leader, which is a really cool ability. The uh, cult units around him uh, can deny psychic powers if they target them. So... Keep in mind, this does not affect the Brood Brothers, but if you have a Neophyte squad around them and they get targeted for a spell, they themselves can deny. If uh, there's just a buff going on or a spell's targeting someone else, that unit can't deny, so make sure you're saving those denies for things that target that specific unit. Something that may or may not get used, but hey, it's, it's an additional deny if your opponent has a lot of um, offensive spells. Really good. Really good. He could take Familiars as well. The Primus, he has uh, seen some different, uh, he's seen a, a big change uh, since a uh, couple of uh, changes, actually. One really big, couple small. Uh, he has five wounds now. I'm pretty sure he only had, um, only had four before. I suppose I could double check that, but while I'm figuring that out, um, other things that have changed about him is that his... <clears throat> um, his needle gun now does D3 damage. It's not, it doesn't do one anymore. It still wounds up on a 2+, plus if it's a infantry, like it's a, not a vehicle or anything, uh, which is good. Uh, but now it does D3 damage. It has no rend, which is a little sad. But, I mean, it's a poison weapon, so what can you expect on a cheap little character? So his uh, now has a little bit more oomph. Could be a little bit more scary against uh, characters and things like that, or at least be able to potentially take down um, big. Or excuse me, uh, the new Primaris Marines. There you go. Um, let's see. I got it now. Uh, oh no, he had five wounds before. Okay, but his his needle pistol did go up in damage, uh, which is nice. And then. Uh, Still has his bone sword, still has his toxin injector. Honestly, I think you're getting to see toxin injector every time because you're going to be gaining on twos um, as opposed to the bone sword, which is just you're gaining an additional rend. But if you roll a six anyway on the toxin injector, it's a rending claw. So I don't know. Looks cool. Uh, there are some relic bone swords that are kind of insane. So you can put that on Primus and he'll, he'll swing that sucker around. Um, Demagogue, he, uh, it's hit rolls, uh, for cult units. <coughs> Keep in mind, uh, this buff affects everybody. So this buff is 
infinitely better than the Prime or Patriarch's one because Patriarch only affects Pure Strange DC list. Um, the this his cult demagogue affects everyone, uh, including vehicles. So you could give your rock grinders that go in a little extra hitting power um, when they charge in. So uh, Primus is very good. And it has meticulous planner. No longer does it boost um, cult ambush because it was before reroll. There's no re there's no roll anymore. So now this hat rule has a lot of stipulations. So the first time you set this guy up on the battlefield with supposedly cult ambush, or I suppose this is a setup. Anytime he comes out of a vehicle, uh, you can select one enemy unit. Uh, that now you can reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by friendly cult units that have the cold ambush ability, which is all of them, by the way. Uh, while stay within six inches of his model when targeting an enemy, so it allows him to come out uh, cold ambush or out of a vehicle or something. Since it does say setup, I suppose that would be a good FAQ question. Uh, point at somebody. And be like, kill that thing, and get reroll rolls, reroll wound rolls of one, as long as you're within the six inches of them. Very good, um, very good. All right, moving on. To the icon ward, he, he's got a buff too. Uh, his stat line is unchanged. Um, the thing that got buffed was his little banner. So um, now he gives the six up, feel no pain ability to infantry and bikers, since we now have bikers. Um, um, it does not stack, by the way, so if any icon ward, um, you can reroll the fail morale, uh, within six inches. Cool. That's what it did before. Now, bestial devotion, um, buffs, uh, specifically aberrants, that they can reroll their, uh, ones when they are doing their bestial vigor, uh, which is nice. Makes it one of our toughest units even tougher. So if you're bringing a lot of, uh, aberrants, bring the occult, uh, icon ward. He comes with the Vigilist thing, so he gains those buffs, and that's a very aberrant, focused attachment, specialist attachment. So, yeah, uh, can't go wrong with the Icon Ward. He's also one of our, the, well, he is the cheapest HQ, but keep in mind, you can only have one of every character, so you can't double up on this for cheap battalions, sadly. Um, and we'll talk about battalions in a little bit. The Abominant. All right, we knew it had to be coming from uh, the Tooth and Claw book, but uh, he got a nerf. Uh, every, everyone else has gotten buffed, um, more or less, as far as I can tell. Bomney got nerfed, uh, rightly so, I think, sadly. Um, maybe in a couple ways too many, but we'll see. He went up in points, 205. Uh, he was 80 points before, by the way, the most powerful 80 points you've ever seen in your life. He was way too cheap. Um, but then he also uh, has a minus one to hit on his power sledgehammer. So now he's hitting on fours with his strength 12, uh, minimum three damage, minus three weapons. So you can have your um, Primus around to give him a little boost. Um, there's, there's, there's ways to boost this guy up, I don't think he now unusable. I mean, he's still like an amazingly strong package that's like that big. He's barely taller than a Termagant, and he, he's wielded around strength 12 attacks, so it's like that. And that can increase exponentially with powers and such. So, um, he has bestial figure like he did before, regenerated health, uh, the chosen one, uh, so he uh, doubles his hits on hits of six, um, and he still has the minus one psychic bubble. Um, that does not affect Tyranid Psychers. So, I mean, he's in every way the same. He's just, no, now his Power Slash Hammer has a minus one to hit. And he's 25 points more expensive. Probably reasonable. Probably reasonable. Still good to take. Especially if you're having aberrants. Even just him alone. Uh, I've seen Abominance smash characters out of existence. I saw a guy charge in an arm and an arm and went bye bye. Uh, yes, that was when he had, you know, no minus one to hit, but, I mean, it was still, like, not a good day for Armin. <laughs> you got crushed. All right, one of the new ones, one of the new HQs, a Jackal Alphys. Uh, he's, she is the one on the bike. Um, so, really insane movement, 14 inches, uh, web skill 3, 2 up ballistic skill. That's pretty dang good. Um, tough 4, be on the bike. 
But uh, attacks-wise and everything else, she's going to be at range because she's got the sniper rifle. And there is a relic sniper rifle that is absolutely bonkers. Um, we'll talk about that when I get over there. But being on a bike, she's got the minus one to hit, which is awesome. And with the new angle to GC Occult, she can give us a little bit of a shooty army angle uh, with her priority target sight. It points at an enemy 36 inches away. Uh, add one to hit rolls for friendly cult units that target that unit with, that are within 6 inches of her. Or if they're bikes, it's 12 inches that were boosted 12. And uh, you can only target one for that phase. So this is a shooting buff. Sweet. Um, and it's all friendly cult units that can be our cult uh, Lehman Russes with their big tanks and be able to um, hit them on uh, threes. Keep in mind it's the cult Lehman Russes, not Brood Brothers Lehman Russes. I mean, if it was the Brood Brothers one, then we could have uh, like tank commanders and that'd be sweet. But, um, oh well. <coughs> Excuse me. Really good character. Um, she's the next cheapest, so if you're going to go for battalions, it's going to be the icon word plus her. Um, so um, keep that in mind. That ends the HQ section. Interesting that the uh, Alphys got into the HQ section. Um, now that I think about it. Um, Acolyte Hybrids. They are the amazing little powerhouses of infinite power uh, that we saw before. Um, now buffed, now improved, because before it used to be uh, one could take uh, in every five a you know a drill or something. So, or excuse me, well no, it used, it did used to be two. Was that an error? In, I don't know. I always thought you could only take one for every five, but I guess you could take up to two. It says in the index here. Anyways. I guess so, real quick, I'll check this. Wow. Huh. So, when I talk about the neophytes a little later, they two were. Not really showing them. Anyways. Anyways, so back to the new stuff. I mean, they're, they're cheaper now. Instead of uh, being the points they were before, they are now um, seven points a model for how powerful they are, that they can also deep strike anywhere they want, just by saying that they're deep striking. So, um, yeah, they're great. Uh, they're going to be probably the cheap um, troops choice for their battalions, um, unless you want to go for a lot more bodies, then neophytes aren't all that much more expensive in terms of the whole unit. You go from uh, 35 points uh, for the minimum unit to 40, or excuse me, to 50 for the neophyte ones, uh, I'm going to eventually talk about the Brood Brothers once, but that's 40, so maybe you could go for Brood Brothers Infantry Squad <clears throat> for the cheap Brood Brothers Battalion, but I think the Acolytes would be a better choice. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, they're, they're, they're the same. They're the same awesome heavy rock cutter, heavy rock drills, and heavy rock saw wielders that we know and love. Um, amazing unit. They have the option for the cult icon. I would suggest it um, because they're hitting on threes already. Getting reroll ones would be amazing. If they're next to the Primus, they're hitting on twos, rerolling ones. So hit on twos, rerolling everything. Amazing little unit, and you can have up to twenty of them. Um, I'm not sure what on earth you would want to attack for twenty of them. You could have um, what would that be? That would be eight of the rock. Weapons, which would probably just delete anything and everything, especially my unit from beyond them. So that way it's strength 10 instead of strength 8. I mean, the, the possibilities just go through the roof. Uh, then the neophytes are lovely little guard things. They've seen changes, but more or less the core unit's the same. What I mean by that is that now neophytes and the infantry squad that used to be the same, one and the same, like you could buy a Astro Militarum Infantry Squad, and it were and that was your Neophyte Squad, um, just different options and stuff. They've now been separated. So now the Neophyte Hybrid Box is specifically these guys um, with the mining weapons and the special weapons. You can take up to two of each 
which is awesome. And uh, the uh, seismic cannon, well, it's not the seismic cannon. Maybe it's the, well, the, the little one. We'll get to those, the weapons. It seems much better than what it used to be. So I, I, I really like that. They have an option for a call icon. Don't take it. Don't ever take it. It's just 10 points wasted. I guess if you have nothing else to spend 10 points on, you can spend it on this, but it's just wasted. Um, shotguns, everything else. You can have up to 20 of them. Um, they're, they're great. They're a great little um, infantry squad that can run around capturing things. Moving on to our last troop choice. We have the Breed Brothers. They are the... Astro Militarum squad, so you can have them in heavy, uh, eight of them, with, and then one's in a heavy weapon team with the missile launcher, mortar, whatever else you want. Um, the one thing that's different about them being the Rue Brothers infantry squad is they can take a Cult Vox caster, which means they reroll morale tests, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, especially if uh, they're by maybe a commissar from the Brew Brothers attachment. Now, one thing that will have to be FAQ, there's a lot of things that need to be FAQ with this book because I think they work a certain way, but there's a lot of people out there that are very passionate about it working other ways. Because they have Brood Brothers as a keyword, a faction keyword, I would imagine they could still be affected by the rules if you took a Brood Brothers detachment uh, from that detachment because it's the same keyword, it's the Brew Brothers one. People are like, no, 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 because that specifically uh, removes the regiment one, and these guys don't have regiment, it's Brew Brothers just already there. Um, I think that would be really confusing and sloppy uh, rules, ruling from GW if they made it that way, because it's the exact same words. Um, if it was like Brood Brothers singular, I mean, it would still be sloppy. I mean, it's I would think they would affect both um, because it's the exact same keyword. Now, GW in the past has not been very good at sticking to this keyword mechanic. I mean, they should have written things a lot better, like supposedly Tyranid stratagem should affect uh, Gene Sealer cults because they have the Tyranid's keyword, but they don't because that's how GW is like, oh, wait, no, 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 we don't intend for that to be the case. It's like, well, then you should have done your keywords better, but... I don't want to go ranting off on that. Brew Brothers is still a great choice. Probably your second pick, in my opinion, for the battalion uh, command point generation because I tell you what, we're going to need some command points for this army. We're going to get through this strategy. Metamorphs. Hallelujah. They're cheaper. And they are now actually interesting. Uh, <clears throat> keep in mind the elite slot is insanely crowded. <laughs> but if we're taking multiple detachments, then hey, maybe there's a little slot for hybrid metamorphs to exist. Um, they are uh, now 10 points each base. They could be 9 at their cheapest with the whips. Uh, depending on what you want them to do, um, you're going to want to change up the weapons on them. So if you take them base with the talons, then they get an extra attack and they add... One to their hit rolls. Achoo! Oh, excuse me. While they use that weapon, so it doesn't have a rend like their rending claw does, and it doesn't have the awesome rend ability like the rending claw does. So if you're taking the talent and you're expecting to go into big giant mobs of just no armor save or very weak armor save units with a ton of attacks, um, and you could even put in a second talent, so they're base metamorph has five attacks, the leader would have six um, each, and they're hitting on twos with those talons. So, um, yeah, that, that would be what you would do that for, and then you would switch to the um, the Rending Claw if you wanted to go for something with a little bit beefier of a uh, uh, armor save. I guess you could also use the talent against things with involves. Um, that way you just mass attack them. The other option is the whip, which I think might be slightly better. It is cheaper. It's the 9-point version instead of the 10-point version of the Metamorph. And uh, that allows you to fight even after you've died. You know, you essentially get to fight no matter what. I think that would be a great defensive unit um, in 
terms of like the blips, you could have a couple units of metamorphs with whips. You put them in front of targets that you fear are going to get charged against, or you see when your opponent is sweeping in from one flank with a big force for a, a charge in, like their smash captains or something, you can put these guys in their way. And while maybe they won't do too much to them, uh, they will at least be able to attack back and maybe do a wound here or there. You never know. And it's just a, it's a road bump. It's a roadblock. And then the rest of the army can then have the turn to actually turn and fire the weapons necessary to kill them. Uh, keep in mind, when you use the metamorph whip, you're never actually like attacking with the weapon itself. You're going to always use your running claws because it, the metamorph whip just allows the bearer to attack. Um, with any other weapon they want. So the last weapon they have is a claw, which is plus two, minus one. Um, pretty good with all our strength bonuses. You can get these guys up to strength seven pretty easy um, with a fair amount of attacks. It is only one damage, though. So there are other things that could do this better, like, for example, the, the same exact kit that makes the Metamorphs, the, uh, the Acolytes. So I, I would recommend using Acolytes if you wanted to go quote-unquote anti-armor because the rock weapons are much more effective. These guys can take cult icons too, just as good. Uh, Aberrants, they're the same. They're the same from the Tooth and Claw book. They're amazing. Um, hammer, Aberrants are nothing to laugh at with fair amount of attacks with three damage each. I mean, they can erase their strength 10 already with those weapons, minus three, three damage each. They can go into a, a big squad of them, can call ambush in, charge in, and delete a tank, do significant damage to a knight. Um, and if there's an abominate nearby with the potential for exploding sixes to hit, Probably also our most durable unit. Uh, funny enough, being only tough four with a five up save, you're like, how does that happen? But their bestial vigor reducing damage by one, and, <clears throat> and then they have the five up, feel no pain after that. I mean, these guys last forever. So, really good. Uh, when it comes to the hypermorph, the leader of this unit, uh, I always lean towards the heavy improvised weapon as opposed to the hammer, because yeah, you're losing two rend and a damage, but you're making double the attacks, and you have six, or excuse me, three attacks base, so it's six. You go from three attacks to six, and since you're hitting on fours with the hammer, now you're hitting on threes with six attacks. I think that's just a lot better. Um, I mean, you could put the hammer on there. Uh, I think the hammer is... Uh, aberrant with a hammer is 32. Uh, aberrant hypermorph with a hammer is 32. Yeah, and, and the hypermorph with an improvised weapon is uh, six points cheaper. I, I think he's better. I think go for the improvised weapon every time. Every time. Uh, pure strength gene stealers. They're gene stealers. Uh, they're pretty much the exact same from the Tyranid book. The only thing is they can't take poison sacks, but there is actually a stratagem that gives them a rule for poison sacks, but you're never. Uh, so, yeah, they're good. Um, keep in mind, they do not, sadly, benefit from the Cult Creed abilities. Um, there is a passage in the Cult Creed that says, Gene Stealer keyword, do not benefit from these creeds. Uh, keep in mind, that affects the Patriarch as well, so no Strength 5, 2 plus to their advanced rolls, Gene Stealers. No 4 up in fall, Gene Stealers. I know, but they're still good, I mean... They're essentially the exact same the way they were before, and people were using them as bombs before. You know, it's called ambush in a group of 20 of them and charge them in and delete basically anything you want. So they're good. They're good. All right. Still in the elite section, I told you the elite section is just chock full of options now, and so multiple battalion, well, multiple detachments to bring multiple elites is probably going to be what we have to do. The climb of us. Uh, he is one of the new characters. I got one. Uh, I got the Jackal 2, just to say. I got the Nexus Jackal and the Climbus, uh characters for this round. 
Uh, he's a little guy with the speakers. Um, amazing model. Uh, he uh, adds a one to charge and advance rolls if they're within six of them. I think that's completely necessary if you intend to halt ambush in underground a lot to get that nine inches away. He also adds one leadership. Cool. Uh, necessary for a certain mental onslaught bomb that I've been planning. Um, he also has a scrambler array, which um, forces reinforcements that, that cannot be set up 12 inches away from him. Um, and also, at the shooting phase, if they're within 6 of them, he can do a mortal wound out of 6. Um, that, that rule, don't forget it. I mean, it's a mortal wound. Win you the game. The uh, 12 inch reinforcements interesting. A um, couple things I noticed. Uh, I wasn't playing a game with Gene Colt last Friday. I was playing a game with Tyranids against uh, Necrons. And he brought like an all Catan Shard list. So he told me he was going to do it. Uh, I let him do it. I wanted to see what would happen. And guess what happened? I got more, uh, more to wounded to death. Um, but one thing that was interesting is that his, um, his uh, those abilities. The Katash Shard abilities happen at the end of the movement phase, after reinforcements have arrived, which is the exact same wording that our blips have. So the question is, well, does one happen before the other? Do we reveal all our units and then they do their Katash Shard abilities, or can they not do their Katash Shard abilities the first turn and we just keep our blips hidden? Um, if they go first, this would be a they go first situation. Or is it an alternation? Um, big differences in tactical choices depending on which one that is. So uh, I tend to have that be another one. There's going to be a lengthy email to GWFAQ for me personally with all sorts of questions. Um, hopefully they all get answered. Uh, it's going to be a big FAQ for Jesus of Cult of the Stone People. But Climavis, awesome unit. I think a must have just to get that little boost for the underground ambushes. And potentially a great defensive unit as well with his 12-inch bubble of preventing reinforcement. Uh, the Locust, he is the bodyguard guy. Um, yeah, he seems pretty good. Um, he's got the unquestioning bodyguard. He's also got unquestioning loyalty. Um, you're going to use the unquestioning bodyguard ability every time. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, other units can also jump in front for him. Uh, so <clears throat> you can, if your opponent's like, eh, I'll just kill the bodyguard real quick, um, you can be a little bit annoying by having some neophytes jump in front of him. But the unquestioned bodyguard lets him protect his uh, friendly characters within three of him. It's a really small bubble on a two plus. Um, I guess real quick, was unquestioned loyalty three inches? Yeah, it was. Okay, so it's all the same. You gotta be right on top of each other. Okay. Um, but which is pretty good. He uh, can do the Space Wolf thing and uh, pile in, uh, heroically intervene within six. That is really powerful. I faced so few Space Wolves, that is really powerful and unexpected. He's got five up in Vol. Sweet. Uh, he fights first uh, in the fight phase. Well, he fights as if he's always charged, uh, which is <clears throat> which is great. Uh, and his weapons are not too shabby either. Um, you inc he has, I mean, it's only uh, strength four, but I do believe there are some. There's a relic that makes it pretty scary. Minus three AP, um, and increase the damage characteristic two. It's base one, but it's two if he charged before heroic intervention or was charged. So um, nifty little bugger. He also has the Nero Trommel Rod, which subtracts one from. Um, again, this could be a component of the Mental Onslaught Bomb, but you have to be within six inches to do that. Um, so, I don't think it's going to be the most reliable thing, but it's there. So that way, if you're in combat in a sea and you have someone with Mental Onslaught, you're going to be uh, increasing your odds to just kill a lot of things with it. Thanks to him. Uh, the Sanctus, he is the other assassin with the um, the sniper rifle. He also has the option for um, the Sanctus Bio Dagger. In 
never, ever, 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 ever going to swap to the Bio Dagger. The Bio Dagger is awful. I don't... It's terrible. Because the Bio Dagger, he has four attacks. He doesn't fight with all of those with the Bio Dagger. He just makes one additional attack with the Bio Dagger. So he's just regular punching at Strength 3, no EP, with four attacks. And then one of them, his fifth attack, is made at Strength 4, minus 2, 2 damage. Uh, winning on a 2 against anything that's not a character. Bad. Terrible. No. No, 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 no. I mean, it's pretty much, he's just doing, uh, he's pretty much like a Primus with his claws, uh, but only once. I mean, I guess twice with the fact that he has two damage. I mean, no, never swap out the sniper rifle for the dagger. The dagger is terrible. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Everything else in here seems like, oh yeah, there's a use for that. I mean, maybe it's not the best use, but there's a use for that. And the bio dagger is like the one thing that I'm like, this thing is garbage. Because his silencer sniper rifle, by comparison, is really good, especially with the potential relic. Uh, and I guess I'll talk about the relic now, since now I've talked about both snipers. This sniper is the one that... <clears throat> strength 4, minus 1 AP, D3 damage. If you hit a Psyker with it, they suffer shadow or perils in the war. And so, uh, yeah, that's a lot of damage to a potential Psyker. You add the relic to it, which is... I believe Stratagem, let's see, there's the psychic powers, here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. No, the gift from beyond. Um, so you can give this to either of our sniper characters, uh, to the jackal or to uh, the sanctus here. You add two to their wound rolls. In strength four, so against the toughness four model, you're wounding on twos. Um, unless you're targeting a vehicle or titan. <laughs> um, really good. And I think you will be using the uh, multiple relic stratagem that every army gets with this army, right? There's the, you're going to need command points in this army. I'm telling you that right now. I was making lists before, and I was spending four or five before the, just in the list. Um, so, yeah, very important. Uh, Kiyomai would call the assassin. He can do the perfect ambush stratagem, which is a three command point stratagem to either move d6 inches out of cold ambush from underground. Uh, no, just out of cold ambush. It doesn't matter. So either you're moving d6 or you're shooting. Um, he's obviously going to do the shooting twice because he's never going to be he's never going to be as quick with the bio dagger. Do not make this mistake. I believe in you. Don't make this mistake. Don't put give him the dagger. Just give him the, the rifle so he can shoot twice with the sucker. And if he's the one with the Relic Sniper, then he's booming things on two-ups. And if it's Psychers that he's targeting, pretty good. He's got two-up plus save. He adds two to his saves for being cover. Um, and he's got the uh, Familiar next to him, which uh, he takes away the benefit of cover from other things. So he's a good little character. Um, not that expensive. Points wise, um, the Sanctus is where do you go? Sixty points, um, and that is I'm guessing with his rifle. Yeah, so fifty five points if you give him the uh, bio dagger, but you're not just spend the five points. You give him the rifle. God, don't. If I see a Sanctus with the model dagger. Mm -mm. All right, still in the elite section. I told you it was just bad, 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 bad. I feel like fifth edition Tyranids, where the elite slot in that book for fifth edition Tyranids was just, oh, what did you do? Because you had zone tropes, you had to do a Malatai, you had lictors, you had Death Leaper, you had, oh, it was just too many good choices in there. Now we're at the Kellomorph, Mister Gunslinger. Uh, he's awesome. Um, we've known his rules for a little while now. His auto. His Liberator pistols are really good. They can target characters. Strength 4, minus 1, 2 damage. Um, there's a Warlord trait to make them 3 damage and pop, which is just insane. There's also a Relic pistol, so he can have one of them that does 3 damage. Uh, base, so that one's pretty good. He has a 5 of Invol. If he kills something, he uh, allows reroll hit rolls of 1 uh, during that phase. So if you shoot somebody... You can re-roll for the shooting, so if you have him around and want to get those re-rolls, have him fire first. If he 
happens to kill anything in combat, um, he can uh, give that reroll hit uh, rolls of one as well. So, uh, but that's going to be much rarer. He doesn't. He has a cultist knife, but his melee is not so great. So, but he's good. He's a good little character. The Nexos, our little favorite table guy. He's like my favorite new model out of this whole range. Uh, closely followed by that Ridge Runner, but I love the, the little guy with the table. Um, strategic Coordinator, he lets you move one blip before you reveal it, 12 inches. Um, really good. Uh, in addition, if your army is Battleforged, he is the one that lets us recoup command points. Can't express enough how necessary this probably is going to be. Because there's so many stratagems that we're going to want to use. Um, and already some at the beginning of the game, and so we're going to want to try and recoup as many command points as we can. Um, it's on a six for him, but if you have a Primus, then when you spend a command point, it's recouped on a five. If you have a Clamavus, um, then when your opponent spends one, um, then you recoup that on a five. So um, I imagine if you bring in Nexos, you're going to have a Primus and a Clamavus in your army somewhere. Um, keep in mind, they have to be in the same detachment. Because this does specify the cult bracket in front of each of these guys. So they all need to be part of the same cult. You can't put these characters in the different attachments and get the same buff. That is a very important note. But I think the Nexos is a very important character. Uh, one everyone will take. He's only 50 points, so he's pretty cheap. Uh, keep in mind, he's also super fragile. He has no invol. He has 5 up save. He's going to die if your opponent can get to him. So, put him behind things. He should be in the back anyway. He has no offensive ability whatsoever other than giving you command points and moving the one blip. So, and he's got a pistol. An auto pistol. So, keep him in the back. Just, if you forget him, your opponent might forget about him. And then it's great. Uh, the Biophagus, he's the uh, medical doctor that's terrifying that buffs the aberrants. Uh, he's got a pretty good rule, um, giving potentially plus one strength, plus one toughness, or one attack for a whole battle to an aberrant unit. Um, <clears throat> and on a two plus, he doesn't kill anyone. If he rolls a one, though, he does. So, um, he's cool. Um, I don't know if you have room for him, because he's also in the elite slot, and there's a lot of other characters that are clamoring for this spot, plus... Plus aberrants, plus metamorphs, which are now potentially a good pick. I just see this biophagus guy kind of falling to the side where it's like, well, I can give plus one toughness through a spell. Plus one toughness I really don't have an ability for, but I can also give plus one attack through a spell. The same spell, in fact. I can give plus one strength and attack in a spell. So I don't see his genomic enhancer, which is really his only cool thing, being too useful. I mean, he's got a cool... Close combat weapon with his uh, injector goad um, that wounds on a 2+, plus, uh, if it's not a vehicle or titanic. If a character loses any wounds as a result, roll a d6. Uh, if you beat the model's wound characteristic, they suffer d3 mortals. So, I mean, he might hurt a character, but other characters that are going to face him are going to punch him to death immediately. He has no involve. He has a 5-up save. Tough 3. Four wounds. He's going to get squashed by anyone else. Finally, we're out of the elite section. We're in fast attack, which is a much leaner section. Thank goodness. Because um, elites is tough, man. It is tough. Um, but you have the Achilles Ridge Runners, the new buggies. They're cool. They're tough. Five strength, five. Uh, eight wounds, four up save. Uh, they have, uh, at base loadout, they are 84 points. I believe they can't be taken in squadrons, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, but they can call ambush. Uh, they can scout vehicle. Now keep in mind, I do believe that because scout vehicle happens at the first bat around, but before the first turn, which would be before you would reveal, you would have to put your ridge runners just on the board. Um, if you want them to scout vehicle forward. If you don't, then you can call ambush them. But if you want to scout vehicle forward, you have to just regular deploy them. Um, they have pretty good weapons. I mean, the heavy mining laser is pretty good. Um, you can put it on there, scout vehicle forward. 
um, into a advantageous position. You're still hitting on fours because technically if you stayed still in the next movement phase, you didn't move, um, which is how scout works. Um, <clears throat> check the camera here. Yep, we're all good. Um, that's a pretty good one. You have the heavy mortar, uh, which is strike five, minus one, one damage. You don't have to target things that are uh, within line of sight. Maybe. I don't know. I... I Main points is that if you swap over to the, uh, if you start with the mining laser, you swap over to the mortar. The mortar is, oh, the mortar is a super cheap option. Gotcha. So if you just go with the mortar, it's uh, sixty-seven points for a ridge runner as opposed to eighty-five with the heavy mining laser. So, yeah, up to you. It's not a bad mortar. Um, it's a heavy D six though, so. One shot, essentially. One D6 roll, are you confident you're going to get the six with the five? Um, then there's the missile launcher. Um, it's a missile launcher. It's a regular Guardsman infant or Space Marine frag crack missile launcher. Um, and you only have one of them, so you're not firing three sh missiles. You're not with the, the crack missiles. You're not firing three of them. His flare launch is pretty good with the broken construction rule on a six ignoring wounds. Um, and once per battle, start a move phase if you have a lot of bikes within six inches of them. Um, this is one that's going to have to be FAQ because it's saying uh, that unit moves an additional six inches if it advances this phase. No dice rolls required. Does that mean you just don't roll the advance, you just get six inches? Or does that mean you roll for the advance and you get six inches? When is it? I, I, from how I read it, I think you get the D6 of the advance plus this 6, but I might be wrong. That one could go either way. I really don't know. Um, the survey auger uh, adds, um, or excuse me, that's the other one. Uh, this uh, prevents cover saves from being taken. This is probably pretty good with the mortar, so that way um, you can just drive this around and shoot out the things that are on objectives. Uh, then the spotter at six inches to the range. Weapons are pretty far range already. I mean, the heavy mining laser is the shortest range thing with 36 inches, as well as the heavy stubber, but the heavy mortar and the missile launcher are 48 inches, so I don't know if you need the spotter or not. Yeah, maybe you do. Battling jackals, the bikes, the fun bikes that make our ass military friends so, so jealous. Uh, they are... Interesting. You could say that they are guardsmen on uh, jump packs because they move 14 inches. They are minus one to hit, which is their most defensive thing. And uh, they just move very fast. They're toughness four, five up save, no windfall of any kind. So if your opponent decides to kill them, they, they can kill them. Uh, you can have a really large squad of these guys. I mean, well, I say that, but um, oh no. Yeah, you can have a lot of the large squad of these guys because you could have uh, 15, if I'm counting this right, because you have, uh, let's see, it starts with four bikes, you can include an additional four or an additional eight, so that's 12 bikes, and for every four, you can have the ATV. Okay, so, so yeah, you could have a, a squad of 15 of these guys with three of the uh, quads and 12 bikers. And uh, there's a lot of really good strategies with these guys. Uh, one lets you, uh, if you are specifically a cult, the Rusted Blade. Yeah, Rusted Blade cult. Um, you can ambush in, throw, attack, and then move again. Uh, which is really good. Uh, the loadout for these guys, I imagine people are going to gravitate towards because each biker can uh, take two weapons off a list. Um, the shotgun and the demolition charge is probably what people are going to do um, because everything else is kind of a close combat weapon or that is really bad. The one thing that really drives me nuts about this unit, they have an improvised weapon much like the aberrants do, but this improvised weapon is useless. Like, utterly useless. It's strength user, AP 0, 1 damage. It's the same as a punch. Like, why does this exist? 
And if you look at the uh, points cost for this improvised weapon, I believe it's zero points. So it's like, what's the point? Let's see, ranged weapons, I want melee weapons, improvised weapon. Yeah, it's zero points. Why does this exist? I guess this is the other thing. The bio sancti the Sanctus's bio dagger, and then this improved weapon on the jackal, or improvised weapon on the jackals. It's useless. Why does this exist? It's hilarious, but it's like, no, no. You didn't need to waste the ink printing that. Anyways. <clears throat> Um, they can also take some close combat weapons, such as, like, power picks and uh, axes and such, but I believe only the leader can take that, so people are going to gravitate towards the shotgun and the uh, demo charges, so um, we'll see. Um, they're pretty fragile, but they can move almost anywhere they want, so these are pretty good objective claimers, um, but in an army that every infantry unit can just deep strike whenever it wants... Uh, it may or may not, we may or may not see these guys a lot. We'll see. We shall see. And then we have the Colt Armored Sentinels and the Scout Sentinels. Um, I'm just going to go past them because they're exact same from the Astral Terran book. They're exact same from the Index. They did not change. They might have gone down in points or up in points. I don't know. I never used them. Um, but they are exactly the same as they were before, effective-wise. So... I'm just going to leave them be. Uh, keep in mind, they do have uh, Jesus or Cults as a keyword, and they are Brood Brothers. They are not Cult. They don't have the Cult keyword brackets. Next is the Cult Lehman Russ. Uh, same thing from the Sentinels I was just talking about. He has Jesus or Cult keyword as a faction, but he does not have the Cult uh, rule itself. He has Brood Brothers. So he is not going to get any Cult Creeds. He is not going to get any buffs from auras that only affect cult, um, which is unfortunate. Actually, wait, I think I made a mistake then earlier, because then the... Right, Jackal Office only improves cult units. So, ah, so much for giving the cult Lehman Russ is a little boost. I mean, they're Lehman Russ. They're, I mean... Good. They can be bad. I mean, they're only hitting on fours, so you're probably only going to put the battle cannon on this thing. It uh, does not have every weapon option available from the Astromel Terran book. You get the battle cannon, the Eradicator, Nova Cannon, the Exterminator Auto Cannon, and the Vanquisher Battle Cannon. Oh, and Plasma Cannon. You get five options. Um, you do not get, like, the Gatling Gun or anything else cool like that. Um, it's a cool choice. It's probably the best anti-tank. Uh, anti-armor model in the cult book um, if you're just going to take the cult so yeah you'd see them but not much else to say Brew Brothers Heavy Weapon Squad they're their Heavy Weapon Squad from the Astral Terran one they're also Brew Brother um, they can't call the ambush they have a questioning loyalty wait a second Hold the phone. Well, I know the Brood... Oh, I, I think I know what's going on. The Brood Brothers detachment doesn't get called ambush, but the Brood Brothers units in the cult book, so the Brood Brother Heavy Weapon Squad, uh, the uh, Brood Brother Infantry Squad, okay, they have called ambush, so they can blip in, um, or even nine inches away in, so... Uh, okay. That might be something cool. Um, let's see, going back to... Oops, too far. The... Brood Brothers Heavy Weapon Squad. Um, hmm. uh, what could you put um, if you were to cult ambush in a heavy weapons team? What sort of weapons could you put them on? Let's see. Heavy weapons, auto cannon, heavy bolter, last cannon, missile launcher, mortars. Put in heavy bolters in the range? I don't But the, you're going to probably see these guys uh, if you're going to go competitive here. Just to segue into that before I move on, is uh, they're going to be used to get the cheap brigades because the, these guys are by far the cheapest heavy support choice. So um, thank you, GW, for putting them in here because otherwise everything else in the heavy support slot was rather expensive. It was a vehicle of some kind. So thank you. 
The Goliath Rock Grinder. Like my favorite unit of all time. Um, stat wise, the same. Um, keep in mind his weapons are all heavy and he does not have a ignore minus one to hit. So uh, make sure you're keeping that in mind. Um, so he's going to be hit on fives most of the time, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but he can't call the ambush, which means he can blip in. He can't like show up nine inches away. Only infantry can do that. He has the record construction rule. Um, the seismic cannon, I think, got quite a bit buffed because now it seems pretty dang good. Um, with a the long wave being heavy six, four, minus one, two damage each. And then the short wave is 12 inch range, heavy three, eight strength, minus two, three damage. That's, a, that's kind of a scary gun. And keep in mind, if you rule another six, the AP becomes minus four. Um, so, pretty good. But I think the clearance incinerator is still probably the best gun. It's the most expensive gun, but it auto hits. So, you can move around as much as you want and not worry about the minus one to hit. And of course, every mining laser is the same mining laser from the Ridge Runner. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a baby's last cannon. Because the last cannon is um, heavy one, but D6 damage, minus three AP. Um, while the mining laser is heavy D3, uh, D6 damage as well, but its range is shorter. It's, uh, it's 36 inch range as opposed to 48. So, I mean, a really good weapon, but I think you're going to probably see those on the Ridge Runner so that way they can move into position that they want with their scout ability and then fire while the Goliath Rock Grinder ha would have to move into position afterwards and so your minus one hit, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, you can give them the cache of demo charges, uh, which is nice. I mean, they're a great little extra punch because they're still as good as they used to be. Strength 8, minus 3, D3 damage each. Um, you do have to have a unit still inside of them to throw them, um, and they do specify you exclude models with a pistol skill nil, so you're not going to have gene stealers in there chucking grenades. Uh, you'll have neophytes or something in there chucking grenades. Pretty good. Uh, you have the truck itself. Um, truck is the truck. He's, I believe, a fair bit cheaper now. Let's see, the truck is now 72 points, so it's a one point cheaper than a cult chimera, but also keep in mind that um, the Goliath truck is the Colt dedicated transport, while the Colt Chimera is the Brood Brother transport. Um, you cannot just swip, swap between them like you used to anymore. The Goliath truck is the only thing that can carry Colt infantry units, and the Colt Chimera is the only thing that will be able to take Brood Brothers infantry units just from inside this book. Um, so it's very important to know. Um, the twin auto cannon, I think I'm better because it's it's heavy four now. I mean, am I crazy? I might be. I've been wrong before with like the neophytes and the acolytes earlier. Uh, let's see, glide truck. Oop, 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 go back. No, no, it's the same. I thought it was. I was just double checking. And you only have a single twin auto cannon. Yep. Not a bad weapon to have. Strength seven minus one, two damage. I think they're good. They're good. Then you have the call Chimera. It's a Chimera. Um, literally the same. Uh, it does have the call Ambush ability, so that's the one thing that's a bonus, but keep in mind that's just the blip thing. So, um, But yeah, it's a, it's a call Chimera. The Frag Drill. Um, so much for potentially bringing multiples of these, what people were initially thinking. Uh, everything about this model only affects itself. So people were thinking because there is a kind of cumulative ability to do more of the drill damage that, oh, I could just have multiple on the field and quickly tremor to ground and then get the effects I want. No, 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 you can't do that. Each drill only affects itself. Um, it's 75 points for a drill, uh, which is, in my opinion, let's see, no, I need to scroll down here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Gene Stealer Unbound. 
fortification and yep, seventy five points. Uh, it's probably best ability is the fact that it has underground ingress. Uh, if you move an infantry or biker squad within an inch of the model, uh, the whole thing, the big terrain piece, then you can put them in the cold ambush for free, and they show up nine inches away from the enemy. Um, that's probably its best rule. Um, the activating the drill part is not so good, um, because you need a six plus to activate the seismic quake part of that, which is the draw the line uh, from it to any edge of the battlefield. Anything that's under that line that's not fly on a 4-up suffers D3 mortal wounds. Um, and every turn that you've turned it on, you get plus one of this result. So, and you can only turn it on once per turn. So turn one, you're on a 6-up. Turn two is a 5, and 4, and 3, and so on. So turn five is finally a 2-up. I imagine turn three or four is when that will finally activate. But recognize that at that point, um, if you're playing your army right, you're probably in close combat. You're probably on the other side of the table, like, in combat with them. And so to draw a line from the drill across the table, you're probably going to hit your own guys. So maybe you won't just turn on the drill. People might just bring this just to have the terrain feature because it does provide cover. If you're, um, uh, do, 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 do. yep, if you're infantry, so you can put a lot of your characters in there, give them a little bit of a cover save. Uh, also gives them the ability if they just run away, they could go underground ingress and maybe escape. <coughs> but um, I think that's what you'll see the drill mostly used for if people bring the drill at all. It's an awesome terrain feature. Um, I just think. GW just hasn't quite gotten the terrain parts for 40k figured out. They seem to got it pretty well figured out for Age of Sigmar, but you might argue that in Age of Sigmar the terrain pieces are mandatory, and that's not as fun either. You'd rather have it be a choice, but I mean, I, I would think that's just better than a terrain piece that's borderline useless. I mean, I have a friend that plays orcs, and so he hates his terrain piece. He, he just doesn't use it. We get to the weapons and stuff. Um, most things stay the same. I do want to do a quick comparison of the seismic cannon, heavy seismic cannon, real quick. Uh, let me scroll to that part in the index. Drone stuff, drone stuff, tyranid stuff. Here we go. So the heavy. Seismic Cannon used to be, okay, oh yeah, yeah, it was buffed because it was Heavy 4 and Heavy 2 before, now it's Heavy 6 and Heavy 3, so it's got additional shots, and I believe it's much cheaper, and then you look at the Seismic Cannon, which is when the Neophytes are hauling around, I mean, it's currently Heavy 6, Heavy 3, and it used to be, Heavy 4, Heavy 2, some more hits. Uh, also, it looks like, let's see, 3, Tyranid, 1, and 6, right? Oh, no, the, the, the rest of the stats are the same, so it's just more shots. Um, and I believe it's cheaper, so that's good. Nice. Um, so now I'm just going to scroll down to um, the stratagems very quickly, kind of go over the ones that I'm most interested in. Um, clandestine goals. It's a cool one. You keep your tactical objectives hidden. Uh, can be quite useful, especially for ones that are a recurring one. So like you have to do a objective for two turns. Um, if you're hanging out by an objective, your opponent might be able to figure out what you're doing um, and want to clear you out of there, but it, it's just going to be much easier to defend objective two when your opponent doesn't know you have to. Um, if they don't know about it. So that's a nice one. If you happen to be playing with tactical objectives, that's just a nice little one. Um, and honestly, it's just one command point to make them secret for the whole mission. So uh, worth it. Lurk in the shadows. Uh, this one I totally misunderstood. Um, this one essentially turns an infantry squad character or infantry unit into a character, unless they're the closest thing to target. So if you have a 
massive unit that's screened by maybe smaller units and you don't want that massive unit to get just blasted off the board if they didn't make their charge. If they happen to be in cover, this is a great two command points to spend to protect them. Um, they came from below. This is the one that uh, lets you select three of your blips, put them underground. I think you might want to plan around doing that every time. Uh, so that way your opponent just doesn't like put everything on the board as blips, then use this and do your three units to go underground so that way they don't know during their deployment or their initial setup what's going on. So I think that one's pretty good. I mean, it's only one command point, so it's pretty good. Uh, Brood Coven. This was the one I mentioned earlier with if you bring a Patriarch as your Warlord, you use this, uh, then you can select a Magus and a Primus from your army to generate Warlord traits for them. Uh, realize that they're only treated as Warlords for um, the purposes of the trait. So killing them does not give Slay the Warlord, which is nice. I, I like that one. I plan to spend that one a lot. A Devoted Crew. Keep in mind this will affect the Cult Leaven Rust because Cult Leaven Rusts do have Gene Sealer Cult keyword. This does not have the Cult Bracket keyword. This just has the Gene Sealer Cult's vehicle keyword. And this lets you... Treat the vehicle as if it's at its top wound bracket. Which is nice. It's 1 CP. Can't complain. A monstrous figure, aberrance. Um, you add one to their bestial vigor. So four up in vault or four up ignore feel pain. I like it. It's good. I mean it's two command points, it's a little expensive. But it's good. Meticulous uprising, one command point. Um, you add up to three um, blip marker, or excuse me, no, this is the other one. Um, you can move before you reveal your ambush markers, three of the markers up to 12 inches, so it's pretty much the Nexus ability times three. So with the Nexus and this, you're moving four blips around how you want them. Um, really good. Plan to use it at the beginning of every game. I think you might notice a theme here. I've already talked about, like, three stratagems. I haven't gotten to the extra relic one yet um, that are, like, ones that you use before the battle or right at the beginning... That you're burning through CP. We're going to need to farm CP like crazy. Because, I mean, I made a list that was like 18 CP, 19 CP to start. And I was already down to 12 before I even started the game. It's insane. These are insane. Uh, Hypermetabolism. This one was in the previews. Let's you heal a character for D3 wounds. Awesome. Uh, Rick to Blow, this lets you have a cult vehicle just auto-explode if it has a cache of demo charges, so this is going to be the truck or the uh, uh, rock grinder. Uh, that could be cool. Um, just put a lot of uh, hand flamer, metamorphs or something on it, drive it into the enemy lines with the rock grinder, maybe assault for a few turns, flaming things up, maybe have a clearance incinerator on that sucker. Uh, and then when the opponent finally gets rid of it, once come in point, you just blow it up, get some extra mortal wounds in there. Pretty good. Uh, the first curse. This is the one I was talking about earlier with the Pure Strange G Steelers. This thing, I think, is garbage. Um, because you roll a d6 uh, at the uh, start before the battle. This is a before the battle one. So if you roll a d6, you target a Pure Strange G Steeler unit on a 1 to 2. If they wound of a 6, uh, they inflict an additional damage. So it gives them Toxin Sacks from Tyranny's program. So not only will they rend, they'll do 2 damage. That's cool. On a 3 to 4, though, they add 1 to the advance and charge rolls. Okay. Pretty good. I like it. Pretty much gives them Adrenal Glands from Tyranny's book, which they don't have access to as a warrior option, because if they did, they'd be busted. Um, and the 5 to 6 was that they lose Swift and Deadly, but their save characteristic... Of models in the U.S. changed to four up. This one's bad. That's a horrible trade-off in this because in the tiered one, yes, you could do that, but it's a choice. It's not a random occurrence. Um, and when you did this, you usually had these gene stealers in Yomagander, so that way they're considered in cover. So they essentially have a three up armor save. Keep in mind, this is the save characteristic, not the invol save. This does not improve the invol at all. Um, I would, I, I suppose you could come in and re-roll this, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would never ever want the 5 of 6 result, because to lose swift and deadly, that's the one that lets you advance and charge, I think just does not help the Gene Steelers at all. If you use this, then you would have to put them underground, so that way, 
uh, they wouldn't get shot to oblivion because now they're slow. I don't know. That's like that's like the one I don't like. I don't like that one. Cult reinforcements. This is a good one. One command point for this: you return slain troops models. Um, acolytes. You're bringing back acolytes. So at the start of your movement phase, you select a so cult unit with the troops. Uh, battlefield roll, so that's the Brood Brothers, Neophytes, Acolytes. You're going to use the Acolytes. Uh, you return up to D6 slain models. Um, slain models. Keep that in mind. Um, and make sure they're set up within one. If it's not possible, then the, the unit's not returned. Um, so if a unit gets real small um, and a couple of your heavy uh, rock uh, cutting weapons gets killed, you can use this to bring some of them back. Or even just kind of give them the extra little oomph they might need to uh, uh, win the fight or hold the objective. Uh, because this does not stipulate that they can't be in combat. You just bring them back. They stand right up. Um, detonate concealed explosives. Uh, I suppose this is kind of our, along with a drill, another orbital bombardment thing. Because uh, you use this start your shooting phase. Um, you have to have cult units or cult models on the battlefield. Uh, you select an enemy unit, one enemy unit, roll a d6, subtract one if it's a character, add one if it contains ten or more models. On a four up, it suffers d3 more wounds. On a seven plus, it's a first d6. So if you have a big squad of 11 guys or more, on a six, they're suffering d6 mortals. Character's never going to suffer d6 mortals. Um, it's too CP, it's too much. Um, yeah, there's, there's way too many things to spend command points on to worry about this one. Sorry, sorry, boy. I want command points, scanner decoy. This is what I was saying about earlier. This lets you place uh, four objectives instead of one for something, so you're adding three decoys during your deployment. Um, plan to use that every game. It's good. Like I said, I mean, the command points are just being spent like crazy here. And the game hasn't even started yet. Either during army building or during deployment. Uh, perfect ambush. This is the one that is zero for the Sanctus. Uh, this is the one that lets you move D6 or shoot after coming out from cold ambush. If you're an infantry or biker, yeah, use it. Um, if you have an assault unit, move them D6. If you have a shooting unit, um, uh, excuse me, make them shoot twice. You can even combo this. I'm going to just kind of go down here. Um, to lying in wait, so I've skipped a couple, uh, but we'll go back to those for two command points. So for um, they, that lets you set up within three of an enemy instead of nine, uh, but you cannot charge. So you could for a five command point combo. I don't know why you would need to use that combo, but if you had a lot of hand flamers, see where I'm going with this. Uh, there's six inch range, so you lying in wait, so they're within range at three inches or up to six because of the hand flamer range. You then uh, you then perfect ambush to make them shoot twice. At all that all that chaff in the way, the, the lines in front of the bane blade of infantrymen, gone. Like they're gone. So that'd be useful. Uh, five command points is a lot though. It's a lot. That's a cool combo, potential combo. Uh, telepathic summons. This is our add a unit. You roll 3d6, uh, comparing the power rating. Uh, then you can add that unit to the army. Uh, nine inches from any enemy models. So a cult ambushes in. Um, you target a cult psyker to do this. They cannot manifest any psychic powers after that. Um, essentially, it becomes their psychic power for two command points. Um, this will require uh, the points to be paid for beforehand or at least set aside so um, but it's a great little tool if you want to have the ability to bring whatever you might need it's real good now return to the shadows this thing's the same as it was before one command point as long as you're three inches away from the enemy uh, you can remove that unit off the table and they're in cold ambush again it's good almost through almost through uh, extra explosives. One command point. Uh, use this strategy before GC or cult unit uh, from uh, your selected unit. Shoot or fire Overwatch. 
Up to 10 models can fire their grenades. Keep in mind the uh, demolition charges are now uh, grenade. I believe they were assault before. They were. Um, this is kind of a big nerf because before you could just take massive squads of demo charge guys. <coughs> I mean, you were bringing them before because of um, being one use only, but now only one model can use them and they're one use only. So, um, this extra explosives is a good combo with the bikes later, where you could have um, 10 of them throw their demo charges on something and nuke it down. Pretty good. Uh, Grand Sire's Gifts, this is the extra relic one. I imagine we'll use this. Plan Generations in the Making. This is our Agent's Effect. Um, counter a Stratagem. Stratagem. You have to have Cold Forearm Demper for this. this. That's the plus one to advance, the plus one to charge. Um, Cold Creed. I think people are giving a lot of flack to that one. I think that one's... It's okay. It's not terrible. It's it's good. Um, and plus with this stratagem, everyone's going to have someone of that. And keep in mind, you have you can only use it if you have a Cold of Forearm Dipper unit on the battlefield. So if you're only bringing like one from an auxiliary... Um, actually, didn't they specify in the FAQ that if you have the auxiliary, you can't use their stratagem? I don't remember. But if that's the case, that's really risky doing that. But... You roll a d6 on a 1, your opponent's stratagems resolve as normal, and you spend 3 command points for nothing. 2 through 5, um, you negate theirs, uh, but they get their command points back. And on a 6, uh, the uh, stratagem is negated, and they lose their CP. So, uh, guess what? You're going to keep your command reroll just in case. You're going to use that for this when you roll that 1. Um, because you spending 3 for nothing is bad. Of course, spending four and rolling the one again, it's even worse. But um, you have to take that chance. A chilling efficiency. This is the Hive Cult one. This is the one that lets you fall back and uh, shoot at minus one, even though you fell back. Um, it's like it's similar to a Tau one um, that lets you add one to hit rolls for attacks uh, made by cult units um, if you do uh, any kind of wounds to a unit from previous shooting attack. So, um, and that's for, yeah, that's for the rest of the turn. So if you can wound something at the very start, um, then everyone else gets a plus one to hit. Uh, for Hive Cult, it gets a plus one to hit uh, against that. So pretty good. Uh, very shooty. If you wanted to go a shooty army with TNC or Cult, you're going to do the uh, Hive Cult. Overthrow the Oppressors. This lets you get uh, exploding attacks on sixes. For the bladed cog um, units, uh, this excludes gene sealers. Um, of course, it does. Um, if you're fighting against Imperium, it's a five to six for exploding hits, uh, and if it's uh, Adeptus Mechanicus, it's on a four, five, or six. You're going to get exploding hits. So, um, it's a cool one for bladed cog to have. Um, it it could potentially, with the amount of attacks you could do, exploding sixes could be devastating. Exploding 5s and 6s and exploding 4 5s and 6s could be devastating. Uh, Drive-by Demolitions. This is the one I was talking about with the Rusted Claw. I think I said Rusted Blade before. But it's the Rusted Claw. Uh, for the bikes, that lets them... You ambush them in. Uh, you let them throw their grenades the, with the other stratagem, the extra explosives, uh, while they shoot. Uh, using this as well, because then they get plus 1 to hit and the wound rolls. And then they can move after. So for two command... Well, I guess this is another five command point. <coughs> well, no, it doesn't have to be. They can just they can just ambush in. Or can they? What's the range of the demo charge? Is it only six inches? Ooh, it is. So if your 14-inch move can't get you there, and you're forced to call ambush in... Then for, you'd have to perfect ambush in to get even closer to within six, and then do this. But you would get plus one to hit, plus one to wound, uh, move afterwards, and you're throwing ten demolition charges at once. Uh, pretty good. Avengers for the Mard, this is the Popper Princes. Uh, this one, I can remember 
remember. No, I can't. Uh, this cult creed does what again? Oh, let some reroll hits at the charge phase, or when they're charged, or have been charged. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So if a character gets killed um, by your enemy, then for the remainder of the battle, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by the Papa Princes when they target that unit that destroyed the character. So it's vengeance. It's vengeance. It's literally vengeance for the mark. Uh, with how many characters are in the army? Uh, monstrous bio horrors, three command points. This is a twisted helix one. This is one that gives you plus two strength and, or excuse me, plus one strength. Ooh, plus two strength. Plus one strength and two inches on the advance. Um, specifically aberrants, uh, they can fight again. Uh, this is the only fight again stratagem, and it's specifically aberrants. Um, good or bad depends on how you how you feel about that. Um, kind of feels a little bad being a tyranny player where I'm like, I gotta shoot twice and fight twice stratagem, but I mean, come on, that's, a, that's amazingly lucky. On our part. In addition, until the end of the turn, subtract one from leadership characteristics of enemy units around them. Kind of just a bonus. Not that big a deal. And we have the psychic powers and the warlord traits. I don't know if I've gone over the warlord traits specifically. I suppose I should. Very quickly, this is already a long video. Um, goodness, how long have I been recording? I don't know. I can't tell. Streamlabs OBS doesn't tell me. It's been a long time. It's been a long video. All right, let's try to finish this up. The generic Waller traits. Focus of adoration. Um, heroic intervention while stay within six, so they become space wolves. Um, your Waller becomes a space wolf um, guy. Cool. Um, wait. No. What am I talking about? The uh, Not the character, but those around him become space wolves characters that you can kind of jump in. And save your warlord. Save the patriarch. Um, so, cool. Uh, Shadow Starker, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target the warlord. Subtract one of the hit rolls. It's good. Um, keep in mind, it's mostly going to be a character and most likely not going to be targeted. So, But it does not specify um, just shooting attacks. So even in combat, you're minus one hit. That's a good warlord trait. I one of the warlord's attacks and strength characteristic. There are so many ways to Add strength and attacks in this book. Because Might from Beyond does this. Um, an abominant warlord with this, plus a relic, plus a, it, it's insane. The, the addition goes through the roof. And then you have multiplication on top of that with the hammer. I mean, it's insane. Good one. Even add just on a patriarch, it's kind of crazy. Uh, born Survivor, reduce the damage um, to a minimum of one. On your warlord, um, give that to an abominate again, and now you're minusing two from damage. He's never gonna die. That might be overkill, but it could be a fun thing to do one time. <coughs> Majestic Majesty, add three to your warlord's aura abilities. Cool. I like to think of this one as you have your patriarch do something else. You do the brood, brood coven. Ability to give your Magus and Primus Warlord traits as well. I like to give the Primus this ability so that way at a 9 inch range uh, he is letting people reroll wound rolls against something. Pretty good. Percher Natural Speed. Uh, the guy, your Warlord fights as if he's always charged. Um, good. You can't give it to a Locust because the Locust already has that ability. Oh well. Now the cult specific ones, uh, the cold forearmed emperor. It is the uh, once per battle. Uh, if your world's on a battlefield, you can reroll one hit roll, rune roll, or saving throw made by a friendly uh, cult unit anywhere on the battlefield. That's a once per battle reroll though. In addition, at the very beginning of the battle, uh, roll a d3, add that many command points. Cool. Uh, very simple, very one off. Um, keep in mind you're only rerolling. Hit roll, a rune roll, or a saving throw. For specifically a cult of the forearm debris unit. I really like this one because of the extra command points. Because I can't stress enough how important these things are. A hive cult, hive lord. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks with ranged weapons by models and friendly hive cult units while they're within six of your warlord. Like I said, hive cult are the shooting ones. 
Uh, Bladed Cog, single my obsession. Uh, after deployment, but before the first battle round, you select one enemy unit. Your uh, you can reroll rune rolls for attacks by the Bladed Cog units while they're within uh, six inches. So you're rerolling rune rolls. Uh, very similar to the Hive Lord, where instead of rerolling ones to hit, uh, you're really re rerolling wound rolls of a specific unit. So that's probably a pretty good one if you know you're going to face a knight or some really big scary thing that's like the half of their army. So you could be like, that guy. We're going to reroll wound rolls against him. Uh, Rusted Claw and Tropic Touch. Uh, each time I modify wound roll of a six in the fight phase for, um, they, they messed it up a little bit. It's, they say rusted cog, it's rusted claw. It's a little bit of a typo. Uh, it, unit is within six inches of your warlord, the iron penetration is increased. So, um, extra, extra rend. Um, but everyone else has rend already, so I think that one's kind of a... Uh, Popper Prince is one, Beloved Grandsire. I actually think there's a crazy combo with this one. Add two to unquestioned loyalty rolls made for saving throws for your warlord uh, when your warlord suffers uh, wounds or mortal wounds. Um, Brood Brothers with a giant blob of... I believe you can have up to 40 conscripts, can you? Can't you? Let's see. Conscripts. Uh, 20. Okay, no, 30. Okay, still, 30 conscripts with a questioning loyalty. Uh, you have a, con a commissar nearby, and because he's a brood brother commissar as well, he's going to have leadership 10. Uh, they're going to be taking his leadership, uh, and they could be potentially jumping in front of the patriarch uh, on a 2-up. Uh, so, or I guess your wall are on a 2-up. So now you have 30 ablative wounds, more or less. Uh, Twisted Helix by Alchemist. Increase the damage characteristic of weapons used by a warlord by one. This is the one I was talking about earlier with the Kelomorph. Um, three damage pistols. Pretty good. Uh, six shot pistols that get additional hits when he hits on when he hits on two ups. Yeah. Yeah, that one's gonna have to happen eventually. All right, last thing to talk about with the some final well, second to last thing to talk about with some final notes on army building at the end. Icon of Cold Senate. This is the uh, relics section now. This relics for the icon word only. Add one strength characteristic for friendly called in between units within six inches of matter. Again, adding more strength, you can go absolutely bananas with the adding one to strength, and then on rock saws or the hammers for the aberrants. On that times two strength, oh man, their strength's gonna go through the roof. Might you, you're easily, easily you can wound knights on twos if you really wanted to, easily, um, and, and that's crazy. From a little guy, you can get your little infantry guy to wound a knight on twos. Pretty good. Sword of the Void's Eye. This is one of the bone sword relics I was talking about earlier. This was kind of crazy um, because. It's plus two strength, minus three AP, D3 damage, rerolling hit rolls, and moon rolls for this weapon. So if you want your Primus to get in there and be scary, you give him sort of the Void's Eye, because now he's uh, strength six, as I understand. I'm pretty sure he's strength four. Uh, I hate that I have to scroll so far, too far. Yeah, strength four, so he's strength six, minus three, D3 damage. Good sword. Dang good sword. Especially since you can just upgrade it for free. With rerolling hits and wounds. It's good. Amulet of the Void Worm. Add save one to the saving throws. And the enemy cannot fire Overwatch at the bear. Oh, give this to the Patriarch and he can charge in without being overwatched. Yes. Uh, that's pretty much a Banshee mask. And that's amazing. Scourge of Distant Stars, add one to hit rolls for attacks made with the bear's melee weapons. In addition, each time an enemy model targets the bear with a melee weapon and your opponent ro rolls an unmodified hit roll of a one, your opponent suffers a mortal. Nice. Uh, another great one for the Patriarch or some other melee unit because you're adding hit rolls for him. Um, I mean, there's a lot of our melee characters are already hitting on twos, so I think of that, it may be the bonus isn't too good. But 
it's a nice defensive buff where if they have a minus one hit or something, it's like, huh, I have the Scourge of Distant Stars. I'm actually not on a minus. I'm still hitting you on twos. Um, but then they can hurt themselves if they uh, roll it on my hit roll of one. So, it's good. Pressure's Bane. This is the uh, Relic Auto Pistol or Liberator Auto Stub. I was talking about earlier that you're probably going to give to the uh, Keller Morph. Um, it is Pistol 3. Four, strength 4 minus 2, 2 damage. Can target characters and reroll rules. So, um, this is a great little gun just to give to your Kelomorph if you want to give him just a little bit more power to kill the character or seriously wound the character uh, while maybe another gun can shoot just one little guardsman or something and kill him. That way you give the rerolls uh, of one. Uh, Dagger Swift Sacrifice. This is for the Cultist Knife or the Sanctus Bio Dagger. Um, and this replaces that. Uh, <coughs> Strength user, minus two, two damage. Each time it fights, it's one additional attack. Uh, wounds on a two plus. If it's a character, it suffers D3 mortal wounds after... Um, but it's not slain. So if a character loses any wounds to this, it can suffer D3 mortals on top of that. Again, you're never taking the bio dagger. Never take the sanctus bio dagger. The relic for his sniper rifle is so much better. Uh, then you have a crotching. Oh, hello, 7th edition relic. Oh, how I've missed you. Um, you give it as a familiar. You upgrade a familiar. Um, follows all the normal rules as a familiar. Um, it knows one additional psychic power and can add one to psychic tests. Um, I plan to give this to my patriarch when I'm doing the mental onslaught bomb because I want to make sure my mental onslaught goes off. So a plus one to psychic test is necessary. Keep in mind, you know one additional psychic power. You cannot manifest an additional psychic power. So the big bonus here is a plus one to a psychic test. Uh, Get from beyond. This is the uh, sniper rifle buff for either the jackal or the silencer. You're adding two to room rolls. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, sword of the Forearmed Emperor. This is another bone sword or the locust blade um, buff. Uh, so swap it out. It's... Uh, strength user, minus 3 AP, 1 damage each time a bear fights. You can make 4 additional attacks with this weapon. Four. Um, I think when you looked at, uh, because the other one, the, the excuse me, the Locust's blades um, do 2 damage if they have charged, been charged, or heroically intervened. Um, and because it's 2 damage, um, the spike of damage is greater on that initially, but then it tapers off immediately if he has to fight again in a second phase after he has not been charged or anything, because then he goes down to one damage, and his damage just drops off. So it spikes hard at the beginning, then drops off. This lets you have uh, damage that's just consistent, because you're making a ton of additional attacks, but all of it's at one damage. So it uh, just depends on what you want to do. And because this is a bone sword ability, I would just swap over to the Void's I one because that one's just insane. Um, before this one, Volcor's Talisman. Uh, now we're so. By the way, the the last those swords were uh, called of the Forearmed Emperor only. Makes sense. It's the swords of the Forearmed Emperor. Uh, Volcor's Talisman is Hive Cult only. We roll hit rolls for attacks made with the bear's melee weapons when targeting enemy characters. In addition, each time you roll a wound roll of a six. Uh, with the bear's melee weapons, that attack inflicts one mortal wound, uh, as long as it's not a via core titanium. Um, interesting, the Hive Cult have everything else as shooty, and this is a close combat relic. So, I think there's a lot of other relics that are just generic that are better. But, eh, still good. Mortal wounds, can't complain. Uh, Mark of the Claw to Oh, Messiah. Uh, Bladed Cog, only. Bear has a four-up invul. In addition, each time the model finishes a charge move, select one enemy unit within one inch and roll a d6. On two up, that model suffers a mortal wound. Uh, keep in mind the blade cog improves your involve by one. So if you get the cult creed and you have this, then you're at a three up involve. Abominate it with a three up involve. With potentially the minus one to damage. He is never dying. Ever. They could fire a volcano cannon at this thing and it wouldn't die. He wouldn't die. 
Well, that might not be true, but <laughs> you get the idea. This, you can make him the toughest thing on the table. He's only like that big. And the additional more when you charge in on a two up is nice. Now we have a rusted claw magus um, relic, the metallophagic stat. Phagic, really? Metallophagic state stave. Blah, 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 blah. Plus two strength, minus five AP, D3 damage. Each time you roll a rune, roll of a four for an attack made with this weapon against a vehicle, the target suffers a mortal wound. If it's a roll of a six, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. Hey, finally something that's anti-vehicle. Omega Staff. What do you know? I mean, minus five AP, plus two strength. So a strength five. You're going to be wounding a vehicle on fives, if not worse. Well, no, mostly on fives. Unless it's a toughness 10 vehicle, which I don't think there is one. So you're winning on fives, but you're doing D3 damage. And on a wound of a four up, uh, you're doing a mortal wound anyway. If it's a six, it's okay. It's nice. Well, a query of Saint Tendra. Trend dark. Ugh. Getting tired here. Popper Princes, we're almost done. Uh, Popper Princes won. Friendly Popper Princes units automatically pass morale, so you get a little six inch synapse bubble. Initial roll a d6 every time a friendly popper unit, an infantry, or biker model is destroyed. Before removing the model, it's on a 4-up. It gets to shoot or make a single attack with its melee weapon. again. So it's like the Primaris Ancient with his banner. Nice. I could get behind that one. It looks sort of prime specimen. Okay, this one's insane. Uh, twisted Helix model only. Increase the attack's toughness and wounds characteristic repair by 1. Oh my god. An abominant or a patriarch with this thing because it's twisted helix already. Uh, it won't, if it's patriarch, it won't benefit from strength. But if you give this to the abominant, then he's plus one strength, attack, toughness, wounds, and plus two to his advance rolls. That's insane. So I guess if you would play a cog, you will go for the unkillable abominant. If you go for the twisted helix abominant, you make the one that pretty much he throws his hammer down and nukes the whole board. Um, I mean, he's already toughness five, so he'd not be toughness six. I mean, he's just such a beast. He's such a beast. That wraps things up uh, for the model by model thing. I just wanted to real quick um, at the end here, if you guys wanted to come back and watch this part. Uh, I got Battle Scribe here looking at the uh, potentials for. Um, let me get rid of these that I kind of clicked in here from the book. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want this. Uh, and there we go. Because uh, of how important CPs are, um, we're going to be battalion farming. No doubt in my mind. Potentially even brigade farming. Um, I think the Gene Sir Cult Brigades could be pretty effective. Uh, the one thing that I've noticed that is troubling with other armies, in, including Astromill Terran Brigades, is that you are getting a lot of CP, but you're trading a lot of on-the-field power for trying to max out on all those different unit types. So, um, just looking here, I got examples of three battalions that Gene Sir Cult have access to. I have the Gene Sir Cult Battalion, a Tyranid Battalion and the Astro Militarum one. Keep in mind, if we bring a Brood Brother Astro Militarum Battalion, we're not getting 5 CP, we're getting 3. And I think I might make an argument that that's still probably worth it. Um, potentially, you might change my mind, but... The cheapest battalion a Genius of Cult Army can take is with an Icon Ward, a Jackal Alphys, and 3 units of Acolytes. I would go with the Acolytes because, yeah, you have half the bodies of a Brood Brothers unit. Because you only have five models. But these Acolytes can cold ambush in. Um, and they can just deploy everywhere. And actually, wait, no, I take that back because the Neophyte ones can too. So for five points each, so instead of being 228 uh, plus 15, so 243 um, points, which would put it above the Tyranid one, you would have double the wounds in the troops check section and they're still cold ambushing in teleporting to the objectives you want them to teleport to um the tyranid one um i think is pretty garbage but with similar results it is slightly 
either more or less expensive, depending on how you take this one, um, than the GCR Colt one. And you have two primes. And these are primes, by the way, with uh, spine fists as guns or just sighting towels because those are zero. So they're not very good. Um, but then three Ripper Swarms, which are almost identical to our own troops because it has nine wounds in the unit of Ripper Swarms that also deep strike in at our troops. So I think the Tyranid Cheap Battalion thing is just not going to happen. It's not worth it. Uh, you could get some more points. Uh, so for 40 points more, you could swap these two Tyranid Primes for uh, Neurothropes. Neurothropes are pretty solid, but again, that's 40 additional points. So you go from 239 to 259. And when you're trying to farm CP, you want as cheap as possible. So uh, may or may not be what we're looking for. And finally, the Brood Brothers Detachment, the Astro Military. Keep in mind, again, we're only getting three CP from this, but you get two company commanders and three infantry squads like before. Um, I still think... This is probably going to be your best one. Yes, we're only getting three command points, but for 180 points, we're getting a ton of synergy here with the, the four orders, making sure these three units get to where they got to be with the move, move, move. We're shooting on what we want. Um, yes, they don't teleport forward, but if you're playing g the Cult, the rest of the army is probably teleporting forward with the uh, going on the ground. So... Um, these guys can be the backfield, um, which is probably very important for Gene Student Call. You need a backfield somewhere. Um, yes, they're not call ambushing in. They're going to be, you're going to know where they're at. Um, your opponent's going to know where they're at from the very beginning. Um, but I think with how many command points we're going to want to spend in a Gene Student Cult army, we might just have to bite the bullet and be like, well, I'm only getting three. But I'm getting three command points for 108 points, and I can't. Especially since um, if you're going to ally in Tyranids as well, Tyranids has some really good stratagems, but they're really expensive, like to fight twice or shoot twice. So um, we need all the CP we can get. Um, so I'll just throw that out there into the community. What do we think? Are, are we going to go with the cheap GC or Colt Battalion for a good... I mean, shoot, if we swap out the Neophytes, well, not the Neophytes, the Acolytes with the... Brew Brothers, we get Oops, not quite far enough. Brew Brother, Brew Brother, Brew Brother. Minimize, minimize, minimize. So 243. So for an additional where'd they go? There they are. Um uh three four two for additional sixty-three points. We get a little less synergy. Well, I mean, the Jackalophus can give a plus one to the shooting for the infantry squad if they stay close to her, and she's pretty mobile. Um, but teleporting forward infantry squads as opposed to infantry squads that stay in the backfield and defend their posts. But you get two CP on top of that for an additional 63 points. Not quite sure if it's worth it. But I'll throw it out there, see what you guys think. Um, my goodness, if you stayed this long, thank you for staying this whole time. It was a long video. Maybe watch this in chunks if you can't quite stomach the whole thing. But I will end this now. Uh, hope to get a battle report in very soon with Genius to the Cult. Uh, hope everyone's enjoying it. Hopefully we'll get the FAQ soon. And uh, this is Jesse.